Okay, uh, we are live. Amy, can you hear me? Yes. And can I hear you now? I don't know, can you? So we're not sure, we're having some technical difficulty. Let me see. Um, you can't hear me? We're trying out something new for tonight so we can have you all join us and make comments, have them on the screen, all of that good stuff. But I can't hear Amy. So, um, okay, that's Amy solo and that's me solo. And now how do I get back to both of us? Okay. Um, so, Amy, I am not sure what to do. We are live. I'm watching it on Facebook, and I can see your beautiful picture, but I can't hear anything, and I'm not sure how to change that. So, Kathy says she can hear both of us. Yeah, it's probably going to be loud because I'm going to see if I can hear myself. Interesting, because I can't hear Amy at all. So, um, so Amy, do you want to get out and start over or do you want to just keep going? They can hear me. Okay. So, okay. Well, always, I love new technology. I just love it, love it, love it, love it. So Amy, for now, I want you to just, um, um, is, is your my computer, computer muted? muted? No, because they can hear me. No, but I'm talking about your volume button. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> I no, I have my sound is turned up as high as it will go. Okay. I don't yeah. know where I have a volume to hear a little yeah. volume thing under each one of our pictures and I clicked both of them and it either X's it out or not. So, um, you can't hear me. so thank you for all of you who are saying that you can hear us both. Check your volume on the actual picture. Yeah. Picture. I don't see a volume on the picture. Can you share what you see so I can hmm. And I'm all honestly afraid to um, get out and start over because we may have the same problem. So, Amy, for now, I'm going to leave the chat open. I'm going to get started. Fine. We'll just go ahead and go with it. So, um, chat if you need. You can also chat to me in the Facebook Live. I've got that open as well. So, yay, yay. We are moving forward to be known. I, we, okay. This day has been so much fun because I was so stressed about telling my story yesterday. And this morning I'm like, why am I stressed? This is an opportunity. It's an opportunity. And I want, always want, said I want to share, um, share my life, share my business, share everything. So this is what I'm going to do tonight. And um, so, Amy, uh, so thank hi. So I just want to say hi to a few people. Kathy Howison move, uh, said, move your mouse over the bottom of the screen, far left side. Uh, okay. Um, don't see anything. Um, hi, Andrea Sanchez. Hi, Sue. Hi, Kathy Laughlin. Um, hi, Red. Um, Red said he was looking for a link for tonight. So tonight, just strictly a Facebook live, Red. And I did see that you're in here. So um, I'm going to bring it up full screen so I can make sure I. So if I look to the right, if you see me looking to the left, maybe. Um, that's OK, because that means I'm checking to see who's here. And um, Amy, if what you what you could do while I'm talking and getting started, would you go online and see if you can figure it out from the Be Live people? Because I found lots of stuff on Be Live, and um, so it was all all good. And um, so let's um, let's go with it now. Thank you to all the people I see on here. Yvonne Ibarra, how are you? Um, Tawana Mitchell. Sheila Harrison, Andrea Sanchez. Andrea, we had such a good time with you um, 
this morning. It was we had a great time, and um, so just very exciting. Red, I do see that you are on. So, um, okay. So, if you make a comment, Joanna Temple, hi, how are you? Arquella, so lots of people joining, and I'm so excited, and I really um, am excited to share this with you tonight. So, I'm going to see if I can, I'm going to share my desktop, and we'll go ahead and get, I mean, share my screen. We'll go ahead and get started. So while we're waiting on it to be started, okay. So um, there we are. Now there's my screen. Yay! Can you, if you can see my screen, would you comment on that so I make sure I've done that right? Um. Okay. You, you can't see my screen, Amy? No. Amy, can you see my screen? Yes, just shake your head yes or no. No, okay, so. Okay, th this is my bad for starting a new, whole new thing on Facebook Live <laughs> on the night I'm doing a webinar. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so I want to share my entire screen. Let's see what happens then. Now, can you see it? No. There we go. Okay. Okay, so my screen that you're seeing is the PowerPoint that I'm going to be sharing with all of you tonight. Oh, brother. Sorry, 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 sorry. So, um, okay. So what I want to talk to you tonight is about how to break through, get noticed, and be known. And this is our introduction to the next course that Amy and I are doing called Be Known. And we wanted to introduce this to you in a in a webinar setting. And when we were talking about what do we what what we want to do the webinar on, because I like to give lots of value in the webinars and then introduce you to a course that's going to go even further. And you all know how that works, how I've worked it for a long time. So we decided, Amy said, I think you should tell your story. And, um, you know, and I'm like, my story? Because she said, well, you know, your story of how you are known. How did you get to be known? And I want to say that I am very grateful for being known. I do acknowledge that, um, first of all, that it's been a long process, but also that I've been very, very blessed. Some of the stories I could share with you tonight, I'm going to start from the beginning just quickly. But one of the stories I wanted to share because I know she's on tonight and Kathy Lofman, I, I love sharing the story of how you and I first met because you had met some friends of mine at a conference. And at this conference, you um, they were talking about me or somehow my name came up and you're like, I want to get to know her found out I was in Houston and tried several w different ways of getting, reaching out to me. And then one morning you're like, okay, God, if I'm supposed to get in touch with this person, I'll, you'll make it happen. And that night, that night, we both go to the same networking event, um, public speakers association. I was speaking, I believe I was speaking. It was the launch of the new chapter in the Woodlands. I sat down across from her and Kathy said, I've been wanting to meet you for a long time. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And Kathy, I think about that a lot because uh, that, that really does is a very vivid picture of how being known works. 
It's all about building relationships. It all is. So I want to say first that um, I love this quote. My brother and I were talking about this. I just came back from North Carolina where I um, was. I hope you can see the screen as it changes. Um, yes, I see you can. Okay. So um, my brother is in North Carolina. His wife has been very ill in hospice. So we didn't expect her to live even a week. And I went there to be with them and to help and ended up staying a few weeks. And so we had lots of great discussions, my brother and I. And he is the one that told me this quote. I know someone, I know other people have said this. I don't know who. Um, I'm giving my brother credit for it now because he's the one that shared it with me. So um, the, what he told me was he learned recently that I'm not 100 percent responsible for where I am in life. There's a lot of variables, a lot of coincidences, a lot of life twists and turns. I'm not responsible for where I am. However, I am 100 percent responsible for my contribution to my life. So that means my decisions, my choices. Thank you, Bellany. Um, I've made some choices along the line. I can't control what someone says about me, does to me, or anything like that. I can control my contribution. And I am 100% responsible for what I do about it. And I'm saying that at the beginning of telling you my story because... I recognize I am 100% responsible for my contribution. Everything else, the people that came into my life, the people that, Kathy, I had nothing to do with that. Kathy did that. I am responsible for the fact that I was out there. I had visibility. I was known. And that's how Kathy, Kathy found me. So I want to talk just a minute about in the beginning. In the beginning, so most of you know the basics of my story, and I'm going to tell you a story now that is a little difficult for me to share because it really means so much to me, uh, and I don't share it a lot. I used to, I used to share it more and more, and then lately, it's been a long time since I told this story. So this is the actual week that I am leaving my corporate job or making the decision to leave it. So I go to work on a Monday morning, just like any other Monday morning. And I start, you know, you what you do Monday morning, you go in, sit down, check your emails, get started, set up your day, all of that. Um, totally different when I own my own business. I do that on Sundays now. I saw this email and I saw that it was from our corporate. I was with HP, Hewlett Packard. And I saw it was from our corporate. And as soon as I started reading this email, I mean, honestly, I had cold chills all over me because it said, you've been selected for early retirement. And, and then it gave me all the details. This is how much you'll get and all this kind of stuff. And so um, I knew they were wanting people to leave. I knew my job was safe and secure. But for how long? Nobody knew. So I went, I said, okay, I'm going to pray about this. I immediately sent the email to my CPA and said, okay, I know I'm not going to get this much money. Um, how much of this will I get? And so we went through the numbers and she made a comment to me that really stuck with me. And she said, you know, you've always said if I ever get laid off or anything happens to my job, I'm going to start my own company. And she goes, maybe this is the seed money you need for that. So that began the longest week that I had experienced prior to that. Now, since then, I've had some long weeks. Um, I did not know what to do. I talked to David, my husband, about it. Talked to his parents about it. Just I talked to people. I, that's what I do. I talk to people. What should I do? What should I do? What should I do? Um, and I did nothing. And then, you know, you know, of course, I prayed about it. And so um, every day I'm like, OK, God, you know, show me the show me the way. Do, what do I do? Do I do this? Do I do that? And every day I was like, oh, my God, what if I do this? You know, all these horror things kept coming to me and stuff. One of the worst case scenarios, I'm living under a bridge somewhere and all this stuff. And um, on Thursday of that week. I am walking down the hall in the building where I worked, a Hewlett Packard out off 290 Skinner Road. And it was a long, 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 long hallway. And as I turned into one of the um, modules, 
there were two guys sitting there talking and um I I mean, so I I started to walk on by and then I'm like, nah. So I just stopped and went in. And so they're like, okay, so what are you going to do? And I mean, of course, by then everybody in the whole division or area where I work knew that I'd been offered early retirement. So I said, um, you know, I know what I should do. I really do. I know that I should accept this, go start a business. I am convinced that that's what I should do. But do I have the courage to do that? No, no. So um, I said, I'm, it's, it's just like, and, and I was known for loving roller coasters, and I still do, riding the very tallest ones. Uh, rode one on the top of the Transco Tower in Las Vegas after I got married and all this stuff. Love it, love it, love it. And I, one of the things I love about it is that, you know, you go up, 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 up the hill, wait, 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 and then all of a sudden plummet. And I love that. I love that scary feeling, but it's a safe, scary feeling. You know what I mean? I'm like in this well, bar is across me. I can't fall out unless I just deliberately try and maybe not even then. So I told them, those two guys, I said, I believe, I feel like I'm at the top of that roller coaster and there's no car. There's no bar keeping me safe. There's no security. If I'm going to get down this roller coaster, the only way down is for me to slide down. And um, so we laughed about it and all that. And I went on my way. Still no answer from God. Felt like God was totally avoiding me. And um, this was Thursday. So Thursday night, I go to bed, I'm saying my prayers, praying, okay, God, nothing, nothing, nothing. Said, hello, hello, are you there? And then I said, okay, God, I'm not, unless I hear definitely, positively from you, not asking for a sign, but I'm asking for something that I will not mistake. I am going to stay with the corporate job. I'm going to do it because I'm getting no message from you to do otherwise. And I went to bed and went to sleep and slept off and on during the night, woke up the next morning. And so the house where we lived at that time, my the master bedroom was upstairs and the laundry room was downstairs. And I remembered, oh, I've got something in the laundry room. So I came down the stairs, went out to the laundry room, got the um, got what I went for on my way back. We had a television in the kitchen and it was as usually was on in the morning with something. And I heard an Elvis song. So besides roller coasters and butterflies, I love Elvis. So I walked through the kitchen just to see what was going on. And I saw it was Good Morning America. It was um, Winona Judd singing at the summer. This is June. So she's singing at the summer series of concerts and all that. Charlie Gibson was the one on Good Morning America at that time. And he came out after she finished the Elvis song. And he said, started talking to her. And this is the part that is just absolutely just, anyway, he said, so you and your mom just separated recently. Your mom, you know, is not going to be traveling with you. They were the Judds. So how you just did your first concert all by yourself. How'd that go? And she said, it was like I was at the top of this huge roller coaster. And the only way down was to jump. And I stood off stage and I looked at that crowd out there and I'm like, do I have the courage to get on that stage? And she said, I, from deep within me, I mustered everything it took. And I walked out on that stage and she said, let me tell you, I leaped off that roller coaster to my success. It was the most amazing experience I've ever known. And she then looked in the camera and said, if you're out there and you've got this big decision and you feel like you're at the top of a roller coaster, she repeated everything exactly that I had told the two guys the day before. And I mean, I'm just covered with chills right now, just remembering how that felt. 
And I'm like, okay, you know, I believe that might be my answer. So I got dressed, went into the office and um, told my assistant, you know, about the, because she had been anxiously waiting with me, told her. And she goes, where is that form? Because I had to sign the form and fax it. You know, if you remember the fax machines, I had to fax it back to corporate. So we got the form and she goes, I'm going to walk with you to that fax machine because I know that that was the answer and you know it. That was the answer you're waiting for. So I did. And honestly, I did. I leaped to the best experience I have ever known in this lifetime. And that is called business owner, entrepreneur freedom to work with whatever clients I wanted to work with. I had no clue when I left that I would be working with authors. I guessed that I would be working with small computer companies because that's kind of what I what my background was in. But another story that I'll say for another time, because I don't want to take up all the time and tell the stories at the beginning. My mother-in-law was an author. She's now passed away. And she came to me in the beginning and said, while you're waiting for other clients, I could use some help with my books. And that's how I got involved. And Lois, from my lips to God's ears and all of that, she's the one that really introduced to me. I'd always been an avid reader, always loved, 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 loved books. Never had been around authors. So she introduced me to the world of authors and paid my expenses to go to uh, Book Expo America, to Publishing University, to um, Rick Frischman, all these people that are well known um, in the whole author community, or especially were very well known then. We're going to talk about that in a minute as well. So in the beginning, and that was the story of the beginning of how it all started. And I want to say this in conclusion to that story. It, there's been a lot of times that I had to remember that things would not be going. And honestly, I told you, I'm going to share some things with you that there, things have not always been perfect. I mean, by a long shot, they weren't perfect. And there were times when I should have gone out of business. There are people on this webinar tonight that I had to let go because I could not sustain the salary pay. And Joanna Temple is one of them. I never, ever, ever want to have to do that again. Every time I would start feeling like that or start feeling the pain or, start, or face one of these obstacles, challenges, I would remember the story. Remember the roller coaster story because that's how I knew the why. Why do I do this? I knew this was going to be like this. That's why I was kind of, I'm like, okay, I want to be as authentic and as real to you and also to, as hopeful. I want you to know it is possible to be known. I left Hewlett Packard with. Um, not knowing anyone when I left the day I left. So that what, what I just told you about a few minutes ago is um, when it started. So I had 30 days and all this stuff to go on. I had to do this training and all this stuff happened. I was told, you know, you can't, um, you can't go, you can't work for HP in any way for at least a year so there's all these rules and stuff. And then we had all these, you know, going away luncheons and all this kind of stuff. So by the time I left, actually left, left, um, I knew that there were, I mean, I had all these people coming to me and saying, can I hire you? Can I hire you? Can I hire you? Can I hire you? Um, and wanting to hire me to do HP kind of work. So I was like, oh my gosh. And, I, and I'm like, I can't do that. I can't work with them for a year. And then someone said to me, all you have to do is find someone to work with. 
and you can have your business work with, you can, you know, like partner with them. We didn't do partner, partner, but I did use them and learned about partnering at that time that I've used all these years. So, um, anyway, so I left there and I left with more business than I ever would have had if I'd stayed. And I did join someone who's no, who was also passed now, but she had a company. Um, and so she welcomed me because I had all these people wanting to do business with me. And we really just kicked it for the next several years. The, my first year, I went almost to a million, went over a million the next year, on and on. It was just really like, yay, what a dream come true, except if you remember the story of the man who built his house on a good foundation and the one that built it on the sand, I was on the sand. I did not stop to build a foundation. I just went totally crazy with all this work coming in, had people working for me. I didn't, I didn't really want to do all that work. I wanted to go work with authors with my mother-in-law and all that. So I paid people to do this work and made enough myself to cover the whole author and work with the author. So I rarely even, even, I mean, I would charge them up very, very little. So after a few years, you know, all good things come to an end. And um, I left in 2002. So 2000, end of 2007, um, I got a call or an email, actually, an email and says, HP is changing their way of doing business with vendors. So from here on out, unless you're at a certain level, you, you they can you, they're going to be preferred vendors and non-preferred vendors. And preferred vendors, the uh, people within uh, HP could hire them without having to do a purchase order, without having to do a justification. I mean, they were like just like on a retainer with uh, with them. I wasn't. I mean, I didn't have that many contracts. So, I mean, we were like up in that. That was well over 10, 15 million. You had to be to get get that preferred status. So um, I got that notification on October 1st, 2007. And all of this was to take place on October 31st, 2007. So I had 30 days. 30 days to do something what and what I had no clue because I had built a business based on paying these people um I had I mean it was just like all the money that I had was coming from HP and it was going away one or two of the smaller contracts um one in particular and we I'm still friends with with her today Gayatri um Chandra Mohan so See, Amy, I've had experience learning to say names like that for a long time. Um, Gayatri was the project manager at HP, and she kept us on just as long as she possibly could because she really did. Um, she loved our work. So thank you, Gayatri. Uh, and she stayed on. So anyway, as of November 1st, so that month, I had to make a decision. Do I stay and keep working with the authors where which that percentage of my total revenue was very small? Um, and what am I going to do? So I again, once again, I'm agonizing, you know, what do I do? What do I do? Knowing that going forward, if I'm going to stay in this business, I've got to I've got to have a plan. I've got to work it all of this. So in the meantime, during this seven years, what I want to talk about is so so basically what happened was, I've, of course, I stayed in business. I've, it was an obstacle, another obstacle. But I want to back up a little bit and say that during this time, this 2002 to 2007, so five years, that's when I became known. So looking back, you know, all things work out the way they're supposed to. I didn't have to, I didn't spend a lot of time working the HP stuff. I had people doing that for me. So my time was devoted to authors and getting known, networking. I went to every networking event that was, I mean, I went to breakfast five days a week 
I went to a luncheon of some kind almost every day. And three or four times a week, I was at a um, a happy hour kind of networking event. I believe 100% in the power of networking. Um, Ken, I, um, Ken Marsh, I tagged you today in one of the Facebook things because when I, one of the first networking things I went to was, um, one with, uh, R.D. Yoder and Mike Mangan in the Houston Networking News. And Ken Marsh was the speaker and he spoke on, he had a, he has books on networking, fearless networking. And I really, so up to this time, remember, I've been working at a corporate job. I have been 100% devoted to my, my job and I loved my job. I looked forward every morning to going to work. I didn't know anybody that other than my family, I didn't know anybody outside of Hewlett Packard, none. So here's an opportunity. So I wanted to say, so, you know, this was not the days of Facebook. This was not the days of the internet. This was not the days of anything other than personal one-on-one networking until Along came this online forum kind of thing called Rise, R-Y-Z-E. If you know and remember Rise, put it in the in the comment section. I would love to, to talk to you guys about that later. So I'm going to take a break just a second and recognize all the people that are joining because I see some old friends. Oh, my gosh. So um, during that time... And and when Rise started, so I'm like, okay, I don't even remember how I heard of it. Somebody said there's a no. We tried, several people tried doing an online thing, but, you know, we didn't even have videos at that point. So just to be on a phone call, honestly, there was no building relationships. And that's what I want you to know about marketing is marketing is building relationships. Okay. Um that's how we that's how I have built my entire business. That's how I came to be known. That's how I got to be in the top 25 of public relation firms in Houston, Texas, fourth largest city in the country. When they contacted me and said, you've you I, we believe you have the right numbers to be in the top 25. I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. Not true. And this was before, this was during HP and after HP. So it wasn't all based on the HP work at that time. So I also, a few years ago, when someone decided to have a top 100 social influencers in Houston, all of a sudden I get this, you always know when you've been nominated or you've won because you start getting these emails about it. And I'm like, why am I getting these emails about the top 100 social influencers. And then I got an email that says, here are the top 100. And I went and, oh my gosh, I was like number 37 or something. And I was like, oh, wow. And when I looked at it, I'm like, I know people that are I thought were much more known than I was that were not in the top. Um, they weren't in the top. I'm trying to make sure my sound is, is good and I'm not sounding like a alien, like Amy says I do sometimes. Anyway, um, that's why I was fiddling with the, the the microphone thingy. So building relationships was my secret. And even though there were people on the that I knew that were not on the top 100 list that I felt like were much more socially influential than I was, I had built the relationships. And so based on that quote we did in the beginning, I am 100% responsible for the actions I took. And I went into this knowing, I mean, I'm a marketing, the, the good thing is I was a marketing person already and I knew marketing. I understood the principle of be known. You have to be known. Now, where do you have to be known? To whom do you have to be known? That's for us to find out and figure out. And as you probably guessed, I'm going to be telling you about our latest course called Be Known, which will be starting next Monday night. Already had a, quite a few people sign up for it from the previous course. So I'm very excited because this is going to be all about how to be known 
how to get your story out there, how to build relationships. How do you be, how do you make money as a writer? How do you make the bestseller list? How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? All these things is first of all, you build relationships. There was a quote I heard years ago that just came to mind. And I always try to, if something comes to my mind unexpectedly, share it. I read a quote somewhere once that said, if a man is to have friends, he must show himself friendly. I've always been a friendly person. And so therefore, I remember when my last day at HP and they took us to, we went to a luncheon for the American Marketing Association. That's what it was. Two of the people sitting at the, some, most of them were people I knew, but two people sitting at the table were people I had not met before. And I still am in contact with both of them. Sue Zimmerman and, oh gosh, Kate. Um, Kate, I can't remember your last name, Kate, but Kate has been in several of my courses. Sue and I still talk to each other. People that I met 16 plus years ago at a luncheon and I realized, and I told those people that day, this is my last day working with HP. I'm leaving. And they're like, what are you going to do? And I'm like, well, I'm going to start a company and that's all I know. And so really, I didn't know anything more than that. That was the honest truth. But one thing I could rely on was I am a friendly person and I know how to make friends. I know how to build relationships and I love people. So with that all together, I hit the ground running, retired in June 2002, launched the company in October 2002 with a big uh, party at um, Papa Do's on 290. They have a room in the back. Um, learned something that night. Always, I mean, I was in the learning mode. I went in to set everything up. And when I got there, there was a sign on the marquee out front that said, congratulations, somebody. So after I paid for the room and and having hors d'oeuvres served all night and stuff like that. And I said, so um, what do I have to do to get my name on the marquee out there? Because I'm starting a company and this is the launch of my company. And she goes, just ask. I'm like, well, I am asking. I said, how much is it? She goes, it's nothing, no charge, nothing. And I can tell you that that night when we had the event, I had like a hundred and something people in attendance wonderful, amazing time, met some new friends. And some of the people that um, I know today were there. Rita Mills was there. Um, Louise Dewey. Louise was known as the queen of networking, networking at that time. And, you know, one of the things I, did, I decided, if you're going to be known in networking, you might want to know who's the queen of networking and get to know her. So Louise and I got to be friends back then. I met Mary and LaSalle. So all these people come into my mind as I think about the last 16 years. I have had a blast. And one of the things I have decided, I don't know what all the future holds for perceptive public relations and my clients and my team. I know one thing. It will be fun because we have fun and we get to be known. So that's kind of like the beginning story and the story of my, how my business kind of got a big hiccup in it. But because of the relationships I had developed, because of the um, I actually came home after that. Uh, um, after I got that email and after I prayed about it and did everything I could do, and, and including cashing in my stock options and some stuff like that. Um, so I, I told my husband, I said, you know what? I probably should just declare that I'm going to be one of the statistics and I barely made it to five years and I'm going to go quit. And he said, whatever you want to do, just let me know and I'll support whatever decision you make. And I have to say, thank you, David. He's been like that for the whole 16 years. And trust me, there's been some challenging times for both of us. So that same day, I got a call from a company that wanted to do a book. They wanted their, the CEO to do, wanted to write a book and he wanted to hire someone to manage the whole process for him. And because by then I had been working and spending my time with authors, building relationships with authors, 
by then, it's now I had enough relationships and enough people that people knew me as the person who helps authors and works with books. And the person that contacted me for that book was Pierpont Communications and Phil Morabito, who I admire more than almost anybody in this world because of his philosophy that he's carried forward in business. He's now the largest PR firm in Texas, and he's got offices in Houston and Dallas, San Antonio and Austin. And Phil's someone on Phil's team was the one looking for someone to work with authors. And he said, told them to contact me. That revived my business. That gave me enough cash flow to not have to throw in the towel. And we kept going. So building relationships is key. And um, so now I want to talk about just and not not going to skip anything, but that was then. This is now. That was me then doing the networking. What would be the because I want this to I want this message of mine, my story to do more than just, you know, let you know who I am. Or even inspire you to keep going. I wanted to do more than that. I want to teach you how to be known. And I want to do that through this course coming up, through a community that we're developing, through working with you one on one. However, I want to help you reach that. And we have to, we want to look at how would we do that today, since today is much different than it was then. So here's what it took. I want you to I want to get down to the what does it take to be known? And I can tell you that hasn't changed. The vehicle that you use to be known has changed. You can now be known a lot quicker by being on Facebook, by doing what I'm doing now and being on Facebook Live. You can get to be known really, really quick. Um, however, it's um, there was no Facebook then. So it was a different vehicle. I used a different vehicle. I used networking. I used knocking on doors, sales calls, sponsoring. I didn't mention that when I signed up for this rise um, internet thing, it was, and it was not a app. There was no such thing as apps. It was just strictly an online forum where you typed in and all this stuff. And um, I met some people there, some people that are still friends of mine today. And the one the one that really um, took off was R.D. Yoder. I met him. We arranged to get together for lunch and um, we got together at the Canyon Cafe. I don't even know if that's still there or not over on Post Oak. And Mike Mangan, R.D. and I sat down and we put together this plan that I would sponsor them. They were had just launched Houston Networking News. I was just coming out with perceptive marketing. What could we do to help each other? And so we decided that I would sponsor them for one year. I, I was their title sponsor for a year. So everywhere they went, I went. When they got up to speak, I got up to speak. When they introduced people, I introduced people. I was the title sponsor and I got for one year, I got so much visibility and made so many relationships that um, it was it was amazing. It still is amazing when I think of it. And a lot of those um, relationships are still in effect today. I still know and love those people today. I love, I'll be out in a crowd doing something and I see Mike Mang and on a regular basis. Hi, Mike. And it's like the years just collapse and we're back to where we spent a lot. I mean, we spent a lot of time together back in those days. So what did it require of me? What did I have to give to be known? And first was it requires, and this is so, this is you. You will have to, to be known invest. You'll have to make an investment. Now, is that money? Not necessarily. It could be time. It could be um, the whole network. It, you'll have to make an investment and it may be money. So authors who are coming out with a book either go directly to a traditional publisher and they pay for everything. 
except the marketing. So the author will still pay the marketing, either pay somebody to do it or do it themselves. So they pay in time or money. So you will have to be known. Just write it down. You will have to make an investment. Now, today, that investment includes spending time on social media. At that time, it was like getting dressed, going networking, getting dressed, going to a meeting. Because after every networking event, there were all these business cards to follow up with and 101. So Tony Harris and I met during that time. Tony and I met at an event. We got together for lunch. We started working together. And we've been friends and worked together off and on for all these years, eight or nine years. Brian Bearden and I met at a, a um, trade show where um, we were introduced and Joe Fournette introduced us. And I was there with um, the Aldridge Company. So hello to the Aldridge Company, Patrick, um, Valerie, all of you guys over there. I was there representing them in their booth. And here came Joe Fournette and Brian, and he introduced me to Brian. And we have been great friends since then. Brian and I have done a lot of work together. He's he's recommended me. I've recommended him. We've worked together on teams. We've been in masterminds together um, and now in a mastermind with Kathy Lawson. And so the three of us meet like every quarter or so and and kind of put our business plan together for the next few months. So it requires investment. If you want to talk about investment, talk to some of these people that are being known now. Um, some of these best sellers that we introduced you to or some of the people that are on this call. Some of the people I've worked with for years. Kathy Lofman has made significant investment, not only financially, but her time, a lot of stuff. Because there's all these conferences to go to. There's training to do. I mean, it's never a point where you're like, OK, I'm here. I am known. I can just sit right here and be known. It's not. It is a journey, <laughs> not a destination. So um, besides investment, and I'm having a hard time looking at this over here. Sorry. Um, the next thing is commitment. Oh, wow. Well, 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 well. I can't tell you. Can't tell you how many people I've seen come and go since I started. and. You know, some of them by choice decided they didn't want to do it. That's fine. Some ran against obstacles and quit, and that's fine. The one thing, I and I was going to look for this picture today. Michelle says I'm uses it all the time. But have you ever seen the, have you seen the picture of this guy digging a tunnel, digging, tunnel, digging, digging? And you can see him digging, and you see where he turns around and goes back out. And from the place he was digging to the gold was like, it was it's called three feet from gold. So do some search on Google and you'll you'll see that that image very well depicts a lot of things that I've seen. And I'm not judging. It may have not ever supposed to have been just a fact that I've seen people come and go. And statistics prove that um, a lot of people, you know, a lot of companies don't make it. So it does require commitment. If you jump on the bandwagon and say, I am going to be known. then that means you're going to be with it for a little while. You don't just get to be known in in a few months or in a year. I told you that my time with HP was five years. So during that five years, I did nothing but get known, be known, using every vehicle that was ever introduced to me. I uh, was one of the first ones to start using constant contact. Because, you know, I, and so let me tell you, this is how I learned by experience. I sent out an email from my email list. I got blacklisted by a lot of people, including Hewlett Packard. So I'm like, OK, this did not work. I had to write all these justifications. Uh, it was great. It was awful. And so I found out and Michelle Patrick was working with me at the time. And she said, there's a new thing out called. Um, constant contact. And so she's, we signed up for it. And honestly, she experimented so much with it. And it really did have its little quirks back right. then. Um, she did so much with it that when, when we, when constant contact came to Houston and they were, they had this, um, 
workshop and we sent Michelle so she could learn all the new stuff. And it turned out she knew more about it than the people that work for constant contact. But so, um, so that was the first of the third party email companies. And, um, so there was a commitment. The commitment was that I was going to be in it for the duration. I was going to be in this until I knew that God was done with me. And, um, interesting because I've been going through some, you know, challenges with my family and stuff recently. And I was like, okay, God, are you telling me like to retire? Cause I don't, I don't see that, but maybe because I'm definitely running into some obstacles. And then, um, you know, I just love these little aha moments when God just says, you know, duh. But today I was thinking about all this stuff I'm doing and planning what we're planning and all this stuff for perceptive public relations. And I'm like, so um, I just, I just heard this voice that says, guess you're not retiring, huh? And I'm like, you knew I wasn't retiring. So I just love it when I was like, okay, so uh, I have a plan and I will be sharing that plan in the coming months. So besides investment, besides commitment, there is perseverance. I have authors come up to me all the time and say, what's, what's the secret? What's your secret for getting people on Oprah and getting people in the media and getting people to be an Amazon bestseller and getting people in all this? I'm like, you know what? There's only one secret, just one, and that's perseverance. When you start, you start it to stay in it until you get there, period. That's the only way you will get there. And there, you know, trust me, I am not immune from th- quitting or for thinking about quitting or wanting to quit even. There's been times I'm like, please, God, I don't want to do this anymore. And then something wonderful will happen. Like this new person I met with on Friday, her name is Sybil Estes. Um, she's going to be our newest client. And she's written a book called Mississippi Milk Water. And you're going to be hearing a lot about that book. Also, we have a book launch this weekend with um, our client, Robert Andrews, who is a sports performance coach who um, has written a book called Champions Mental Edge. Here's a copy of the book. Um, Champions Mental Edge, Turning Winners into Champions. So um, his book launch will be Thursday and Friday. And then we have an event on Saturday at the River Oaks bookstore. So that's some of the rewards along the way, some of the results. So when you, you will see results along the way, you don't wait until you, there is no like, I'm known, now I see results. It is a journey. It's definitely a journey. And some of the results along the way were having, having clients be in the, you know, being on uh, national television, having clients being on local Houston television. Houston is the fourth largest market in this country. So to be on a Houston television station is big. So that's some of the results. And then now that we've got all this new technology, new online, virtual blogging. Uh, We heard today from um, Andrea Sanchez about Medium. And I know, um, Kathy Laughlin, you've talked about Medium before. So we're going to be exploring that. So every time you think you're like, okay, we can rest a little bit. Nope. Here comes a new thing for us to learn. So um, actually the thing that I'm doing, when you get an email from me, and if you're not on my email list, you can go to Perceptive Public Relations and sign up. There is a free gift and it's a workbook. Um, called How to Have Purpose in Your Life. That's a new opt-in. I have not even been promoting it yet, waiting till this today was over. So I'll be sending out an email or be posting it in the next few days, but you're welcome to go ahead and go there. And um, and you'll, you'll see some of the stuff that we're doing. So um, after the results, then what is the next step? So you'll see results again. You'll see results as you go. The next steps for us right now is for me to tell you about the uh, course coming up. So the next course that I'm doing is called Breakthrough. Get noticed. And then here's it. Be known. 
That's the course, be known. Before you can be known, you have to break through some of that noise. And that by noise, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, by noise, I mean um, all the stuff going on with, with social media, all of that stuff out there, all the posts, all that you have to sift through to find what you want to see. So, um, so that's that's how you break through. You get noticed and then you are on your way to being known. So here's kind of going to be like our our um, logo for the this course. And um, so I want to tell you now about the course itself. So it is time. What is becoming known? Sorry, I have this, the, my slides are not moving like they normally do because they're online. So what if becoming known was comfortable, natural, and easy? And what if you could do it every single day without even thinking about it? What if you could build relationships every day? So if you're going to be known, which you there is no choice in the matter if you're going to become like... Um, a bestseller, if you're going to make money, if you're going to be speaking, anything you want to see as results, there, there's time you have to be known. And no one can just, you know, out of a clear blue sky, you show up. It's like I used to tell, I've told several of my clients that the, um, if you build it, they will come. That was a movie. And it only happens in the movies. So you can become a natural marketer and you don't have to worry about it, about breaking through the social noise, about getting noticed, about being visible. We're going to help you in this course know how to be known. And um, I'm going to take just a minute. And, and, and in a minute, I'm going to take a minute to introduce all the people that joined. So uh, does any of this sound like you? You know, these are these comments are things I've heard from my clients. You love to write, but you're not a joiner. Does that sound familiar, Russell or Kathy or Sue? So you love to write and you like to be writing, but you don't join. So we're going to help you with the joining part. You you crave connection, but you want to be in the comfort of your own house. So let me tell you, today's the day you can do that because here we are. I'm doing a webinar. I'm on Facebook Live. Um, I'm not leaving. I'm sitting in, sitting right in front of my computer. So you want to post on social media. You want to create an email list. You want to have a blog. You just don't know where to start. I heard, uh, I used to use this illustration a lot, and I'd really forgotten about it until I heard, I listened to a webinar with Bellany Deshong this week. And there was that giant elephant. Remember, we used to talk about an elephant all the time, and we're like, okay, so how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So I used to say, but you know, the funny part is they don't tell you where to take that first bite. So, so that the elephant doesn't hurt you. But besides that, you want, you got a lot to do. There's a lot available to get you out there. So much more that it's all noise, noise, noise. I, I wouldn't even venture to guess how many bloggers there are these days. I know if you go to Google and you put in a search term for anything, doesn't matter what it is, your response is going to be in the millions, millions and millions and maybe even billions. So I'm going to go after this and put it in, put in bloggers and see how many I get. So you're smart. You're sharp. You're an author. You're smart. You're savvy. You know what you're writing about, whether you're writing fiction or whether you're writing nonfiction. You know how to write. You got that one down. So let's go to being known, which is um, marketing. Nothing but marketing is what it is. And what did I say in the beginning? Marketing is building relationships. So I want to introduce you to this next course and introduce you to some people that you will you want to have a relationship with. And first of all, that will be everybody in the course. Because we've had a great time. I, I wish I was where I could have people give their testimonials tonight, but I will be doing that throughout this week. 
because the course is going to start next Monday, April 2nd, same time. And I don't know what we're going to go back to using Zoom, which I know how to use for that because we want everybody to be on and everybody to participate. But if I open this up now and if you want to, you can make a Facebook comment. Um, what you got out of this past course, because we had some we ended at eight and most weeks we didn't get off until eight thirty. So people just kept on talking. So what you're going to get in this course is this guided weekly training to get you motivated. So one of the things, and I think Sue Hawley was the one that said to me was it just motivates her to keep going when she's in this group every week. It helps you to be excited because you hear what somebody else is doing and you're like, Oh, I can do that. And it makes you ready to be known. We also have a, a private Facebook group that you're invited to be a member of. And by the way, that will have some of the few previous courses in there that you can have access to the videos, not the live training. I have all kinds of resources to give you, and I share them in this Facebook group. We have marketing templates. We have different tools. If I see something come across my email or my or even in an event and I'm like oh my gosh this is something that you know we need to know about I will be sharing it and I have been doing that so we're going to have some be known challenges and some suggestions for you so we got lots of good stuff coming up and it will be a four-week course starting Monday April 2nd going for four weeks on Monday night and then we always have a fifth um fifth week for Q&A and just introducing an expert or something like that. So are you ready to join us? Because we would love, I would love to have you um, part of this building relationships, part of this being known. I Most of the people that are on here tonight, I know I am known by these people. I've been tagging you all for the last several days. Um, I want to introduce you to each other. I love being a connector. And so one of the things I have done is made this course available. And I was going to have it end at midnight tonight at 57. But I found out from Alan at Texas Authors that he's sending an email out about it tomorrow. So I want them to have this. So, Amy, we're going to leave it at 57 until midnight tomorrow night. So at midnight tomorrow night, the switch will be flipped and it will go to $97. Still a great value. I mean, mo a lot of courses are over $97, especially a four week live training with access, all of that. And I did want to say this. I didn't put it in. So this is the link you go to. And um, Amy, if you would put that in the comments. And if not, I'll do it later because I've kind of. Yeah, there she's already got it in there. Amy, I love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. So. Um, what was I going to say? So join tonight. Oh, I know what I was going to say. So if if you join tonight. I'm not going to put a limit even. I'm going to say anybody that joins before midnight tonight gets a 30-minute consultation or coaching session or however you want it to go with me or Amy. Not both of us, me or Amy. So if you need help with your social media, I suggest Amy. If you've got a book coming out and you want to know about the book and the publishing or the how to get reviews or any of those things that I do or press releases, then I would love to have a conversation with you. So that's our fast action. You sign up by midnight tonight and you're going to get that. So I'm going to now get out of sharing my screen and go in here where um, I see Arquella. Hi, Arquella and Jenna are talking. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Jenna. She said, I'm awesome. And Jenna, I just want to be like you when I grow up. That's all. All I ask is to be like Jenna. Um, Brian says, thank you for your true honesty. And Brian, mm, you know, I love you. <laughs> Kathy, Kathy, how wise that I don't know what I did before you came in my life. I swear this woman is just a wealth of support. And she put a note in there and said, take a deep breath. You're doing great. She said to me the other day when we announced, um, we announced a course. I forgot what, what course it was, but she goes, you are always pitching, aren't you? And so I'm like, I guess that's the truth. So Shauna, my niece, Shauna said, hi, Aunt Sandy. And she's proud of me. So thank you. Um, so now I see back before 
uh, Brian, you said three screens small. So Amy got off and I see Amy now. I'm going to add you back, Amy, to the broadcast and see, you know, see if things by some miracle we can hear you now. Can I hear you? Can you hear me? I, okay, I don't want to hide this. I want to hide this. Okay. Everybody else can hear me. I'm still seeing that screen. Oh, I know. I know how to do that. Okay. So, Amy. Yes. Can I hear you? I don't know. <laughs> Apparently not. Okay. So, um, let me go down. Keep going down. Sheila, um, I see make your PowerPoint full screen. Don't know how to do that. I'll figure that out before next time. Brian said marketing boot camps rock. Marilyn Harris. Hi, sweetheart. And um, Sue. Hi, Sue. Hi, Andrea. Um, and she said she sees me, not the screen. So that was back there a while. After a while, I could see it. So hi, Arquella again. Um, let me see if any, I saw some other. Red, thank you for joining us. Um, and I see some other people over here. I'm not sure why I see some people on the um, Facebook Live, not the um, Be Live. So, Roz Bazil, thank you for joining us. Stacey Davenport, Mike Brady. Hi, Mike. Dominique Prosper, Bill Meganhart. Bill, did you hear us this morning? We asked if you were interested in being on Author Talk. Jim Harrington. Oh, my gosh, Jim, I haven't heard from you for a long time. It's good to hear from you. Dale Miller, L. Turpening, um, Christina Holligan. There's Vola, of course. Mm, love you, Vola. Uh, Kurt Jackson, Melanie Brown, Valerie, Sinead O'Hare, Joyce Faulkner. Love you. And um, Aunt Betty. Arms join. Thank you. William Dutton. I haven't even heard your name for a long time. And good to see you. Good to see um, all these other people that joined. So I think that's pretty much it. Um, I wish I really wish I had done Zoom now because then I could go back to talking to people or something. But this is going to be the end of it. Remember, um, wow. and I'll be on Facebook for a while if you have any comments or any more comments. Uh, Remember, if you sign up before midnight tonight, and I, I wanted this to be all about my story, all about how to be engaged, how to be known, um, did not want to, this to be about selling the new course ex exactly, and yet I wanted you to know that we're starting this new course, and so I'm going to ask that some of the people in the existing course, like Sue, like Red, like Marilyn Harris, like Arquella Hargrove, uh, Brian Bearden, Kathy Hawaisen. Um, Sue, did I say you? I think I did. I would love for you guys to um, share on the th on Facebook if you have any thoughts about the course and would you do it again? I know most of you will. You've already signed up for the next one. So um, if you have any comments, feel free to add those. And I'm going to do a couple of Facebook Lives throughout the week. And would love to be including, uh, so Amy, you and I will talk about that. Would love to have Red on, Sue, you know, just different people at different times just to talk about the course and what we're going to get out of it and what we're going to do. So for tonight, good night. Glad you all enjoyed it. I'm sorry for the technical stuff. Uh, we'll figure this out before we do this again. But for now, I'm going to end this broadcast with uh, good night. And I love you all. And if you want to know any more about my story, feel free to ask.